Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Pat Chat Edition. I'm Violet. Hi, I'm Pat. We make these videos to help you guys to understand about the ketogenic lifestyle, which I'm living a ketogenic lifestyle. Pat's living a low-carb lifestyle. And we, well, I should say we, I always try to take credit for it. Patrick scours the internet looking for ideas, articles, videos, talking about either keto or low-carb. And sometimes he brings them to me because they're just amazing articles. And sometimes it's because they're making some kind of mistake. Of time, so yeah. why don't you let mistake, me know yeah. what's happening uh, today? The source of uh, our chat this week uh, is not an article, actually, is, is uh, comments that I saw uh, on your videos. People get like stuck on the keto lifestyle. They get on plateaus. Plateaus, okay. So so I thought we, we, we would like help our viewers to see like uh, what, can be causing? What, what can be causing, what's happening. Uh, so, 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 so did yeah. the viewers give us details? No, not at all. I'm just like oh, to say, okay. uh, out of our, like, a general we, we jump like in plateaus. So I, th I thought, first of all, before we, we, we get what to is the plateaus, plateau? no, um, not even what is a plateau. Oh, I think we should define okay, it. Okay, let, let, okay, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go and define what, like, what is a plateau. Okay, so a plateau is going one month where your weight doesn't change but neither does your dimensions so you're one month you're not losing weight you're not losing inches okay that's my definition okay. and i heard another doctor define it that way as well that's a plateau okay a week is not long enough two weeks is not long enough three weeks is not long enough it needs to be a month okay so okay i guess my next question would be what differentiate a plateau versus being at your goal? You have to know what okay. your goal is. So I would, yes. Yeah, so basically <laughs> I would need to know what my goal is. So okay. for example, and, and so this is where it come, becomes tricky, right? Because I've said this a bunch of times, um, a doctor can't tell me what my goal weight's supposed mm -hmm. to be. I, I, I need to look at how my body feels and what's happening with me and to dis determine whether or not I'm at a good spot or not. So, as you're saying, what happens if I still have 10 pounds to go and I stop losing and I feel amazing. And, um, so I feel amazing. Like physically, I, I, I feel like I like the way that I look, but I'm still 10 pounds away from my, Which my, is my, case, by the way. <laughs> my ideal scenario. Right. Mm. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so so if yeah so basically if you look how you want to look and you feel good and you're like 10 pounds away from that weight goal maybe this is your body saying you're good stay there stop everything's right okay. got a little bit of extra weight for in case there's a monsoon okay. or something right okay. now your body doesn't know that the fridge is stocked with food and that that's not going to happen mm -hmm. right but so it could but, be that it could don't be. Go, that. Go, don't go too far. Uh, first of all, what I want to cover with you, like, is uh, I, I'm not sure if you. I think you you did, but like, how to set your goal? What what? How do a person knows like? If you want to do a recap? Okay, so because we so, I so, did do a video okay. of that, how but, to set like, your goal. So you we probably I probably will link it up there. But just to do brief, there's a weight range that we know is healthy, right? Typical. So we're always trying to do human race versus violet. So there's a weight range for someone my height that doctors believe is healthy, human race. But then there's violet. When I am at a certain weight, how do I feel? When I am at a lower weight, how do I feel? Mm -hmm. When I'm in the middle of those two weights, how do I feel? So part of it is me recognizing that, yes, there's this weight range that I'm going to make an attempt to be somewhere within. And then we're adding to that, okay, when I get down close to that weight, do I feel okay? So do I have energy? Do I feel strong? Is my body um, lack? So is, is there still inflammation happening or no? So like if there's still inflammation, I'm probably still have some more work to do. Mm. Right? So choosing the correct diet matters in this situation, right? Because I could be at the correct weight and have a bunch of inflammation, which was my 20s. Mm. By the way, I was at the completely perfect weight and had inflammation out the wazoo. So it's not only a weight thing. And this is where I always come back to. It's like the weight is is a one of the markers that we use. But then I also tell people to check how your clothes fit. I also tell people to check how your body feels because the other thing that matters is how much muscle you have on your body. 
See, that's another thing that I want to point out is that, you know, during ski season, for example, um, when, well, depending on how much longboarding we get to do in the summer, like I have more muscle sometimes than other times, depending on what part of the season, like, you know, fall, winter, sorry, fall and spring are times where I have a little bit less muscle mass because I don't have activities that I like to engage, which was the whole reason for putting the gym in my house. We'll see if that works out this year. But um, so like trying to figure out and find the ways to keep your muscle mass is important, mm -hmm. but muscle mass will also determine how much you weigh, right? Because I can look really good in my clothes and have more muscle on me and way more. So I'd be on the scale and it will look like maybe I'm overweight, but in actuality, when you look at me, you can see, well, no, she's not overweight because she has more muscle than fat. So a number, okay. So a number on the bal the, the scale, it's number on the scale, it's not like, shouldn't be actually it's not the be all end all. goal. Yeah. yeah, it's not so, to be but, all in all. How, how do you, what do you tell to a person that like will say to you, I want to get to 150 pounds, for example? Like, so this like is the his, thing is that this is where I, this is where I say that. So... Is it a plateau if my goal was 150 and I get to 160 and I actually look good and I feel good, I have no inflammation and maybe I even have more muscle than I used to have, then maybe what's actually happening is that I'm supposed to be 160. Okay. Right? Like it, that could actually be the answer that with my muscle and, you know, like that I'm supposed to be 160. Okay. Right. And that number is going to change over the course of years to come. Right. Because maybe I'm going to go into my future and I might have a little bit less muscle then I'm probably going to weigh a little less. Right. If I continue to eat the same way, okay. I might go into the future and I might have a bit more muscle and I might weigh a little bit more, but still look good, like look fine. So my clothes might still fit me great, but I, I have more muscle now. Right. So it depends. Okay. You know what the funny thing is about living a healthy lifestyle? The more you do it, the more enthusiastic you are, the more you do. So physically, so like, if you think about it, like how much activity you do today, like I'm, I was always the crazy active, active person, but how much activity you do today now that you're healthier yeah, and you're doing much yeah, more yeah, sure. than, than mm -hmm. what I used to have to drag you to go do. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, it just, it's, it's just reality. Mm -hmm. You, he actually goes with stuff on his own without me. Whereas before it was like, are we going, are we going? Mm -hmm. Like it had to be like us going together for you to do stuff. And now you, yeah. you go, you do stuff. Mm -hmm. So like it's it's the reality the more healthy you feel the more stuff you do so there's a lot of people out there who feel like they're plateaued because they're at a 10 pounds more five pounds more but they're not counting the extra muscle that they're actually carrying yeah. because they're doing more okay right that's different than being plateaued mm -hmm. when you still have a lot of weight to lose which i know you're we're going to talk about eventually yeah. but you do you still need a goal or like you could just address the 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 situation by just changing your lifestyle and see what happens like is it so that's what i like to mm -hmm. encourage people to do okay like but i i do feel there's still value in having some kind of idea right but for me the ultimate marker of good health is that waist to height ratio mm -hmm. when you're at 50 percent you know that you got it right, mm. right? If you're not at 50%, mm. you have some work to do. But like, so this is where, again, how your clothes fit, how like how your waist versus your height. If I check my waist to height ratio and it's 50% or less, whether I'm at that number that the doctor said isn't the point, right? Because mm. it's just probably means I have more muscle now than I have when I started this process because I'm walking more, maybe I'm playing more with my kids and I'm rolling on the floor and blah, blah, blah. Like all yeah. that stuff is exercise. Yeah. We don't count it, but it is. Mm. My mom is so much stronger than me. Why? She always has a grandchild in her arms, all ways. Mm. One kid here, one kid there, up and down the stairs. My mom is so much stronger than me because she's always carrying somebody around. Mm. I don't do that. I, I had one kid and I don't carry her around anymore. So it's like, you know, like it's amazing to me how much stronger she is than me, but she's always carrying somebody. Mm -hmm. She's always yeah. exercising, always. Yeah. What I want Grandchild, great-grandchild. Yeah. What I wanted to add is um, your, let's say, your body is not stupid. Like it knows what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. So, so because you were talking about the ways to height ratio, um, I feel like your body is going to tackle like the visceral fat, like it's going to tackle what makes your tummy stick out before it gets like fat from your leg if you don't have much or your arm or so so you should like that's a good indicator because you should see results like in your 
tummy area first. I don't know if I'm making sense in what I'm... You will see a lot of positives happen in the places where you need the most work first. Mm -hmm. So that's another good reason to talk about stalls and you're gonna, I'm gonna come back to that in mm -hmm. a second. Yeah. But so you're right, like a lot of times people will notice that their stomach is coming down at what seems like a faster rate than the rest of their body fat. But this is where I come back to, how do I look in the mirror? Mm. Right. Because if I'm if I lose my stomach and my stomach is all nice and fat, but I still have excess weight on me that now I'm look I'm still not like feeling healthy. If I still have inflammation because I still have all this extra on me. Don't forget fat. We, we don't think about this often, but fat cells actually produce inflammation. It's part of their process. And I'm not really sure why they do it, but they actually do produce inflammation. So like having less fat cells on you or or smaller i should say fat cells on you helps you to have less inflammation so if if your end result is you feel maybe that you're a little bit bigger but you don't have inflammation you again you might be at just your your mm. correct weight yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that so and i guess we'll talk about these things afterwards but it's not like you couldn't push through a stall if you wanted to get down a little bit lower but I'm encouraging people just to consider for a moment, is it possible that this is where I'm supposed to be? So it's a question mark. How are my clothes fitting? Do I have the correct height to, uh, sorry, do I have the correct waist to height ratio? Like if these things are okay, hmm. then you might be wanting to consider that, okay, maybe this is just my weight. Okay. Do I have more muscle on me? Okay, so, so let's say you're stalling and you don't feel like you're you got to your 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 goals so if it's an actual stall so, so like i'm hmm. actually still you didn't change. Demonst demonst well no i change i mean obviously you might have you no would've... no you didn't change your uh your eating habits you're still eating the same thing you didn't change your your you're diet saying, you're saying we're still you're, eating keto you're still eating keto Ke okay. and you're stalling okay so if i if i'm eating a good a well-formulated ketogenic lifestyle and i'm on a stall stall so let me just say this part first my first thing for people to do always verify weigh your food for about a week and just mm -hmm. verify am i putting on my plate what i think i'm putting on my plate because what i i will say is that i find the people who stall the most often are the people who after two or three months of doing keto think they've got it and just start throwing things on their plate because i know what to do mm -hmm. and then next thing you know they're not they go they're into, not they go into it intuitive eating a little in, bit too early do, well, in the process yeah they go into intuitively yeah. eating too early in the process and mm -hmm. they really can't tell if they're mm -hmm. and so they're over basically they're they're over um and interestingly enough if i'm only one or two months into my ketogenic journey then i don't have flexibility so when there's too many carbs there my body just goes back to doing what it normally does because after one, two months, you shouldn't be stalling, basically. Like, what, what, do, what do you say? Like, probably Again, a month's two... worth, like you're in month number it's three like, and you're not moving at all. Uh, there's something, like, yeah, something yeah, happening something there. Something's wrong with your... Right? Now, so that's, that's the first thought. The other thing, so let's say, let's say that you weigh your food and everything and, okay, you know, it seems like everything's okay. Um, you, you could be in that situation where you're just one of those people that, 20 isn't your number your number might be 15 your number might be 10 hmm. right like some people 20 isn't their number okay you know this is part of the reason or if you're doing net carb maybe that you should be doing total carb total so it depends okay. well, it depends on where you are in the in your story this is the part of the reason that dr um westman always tells us that dude you know he says start with 20 total not net because 20 total guarantees that you're really keeping your carbohydrates extremely low mm -hmm. so if you're doing 20 total and you're not moving as he would have suggested then you take five off and you do 15 and you see what mm -hmm. happens right chances are you're gonna start to move again so all this really means is that your um, hyperinsulinemia insulin resistance is actually hyperinsulinemia so your hyperinsulinemia was that high so it was you had that much damage that your body of course, you change anything, your body's going to lose. Mm. But like if, you, if your hyperinsulinemia is really bad, eventually you'll have to push even harder to get 
to this is this is part of the reason that I said, you know, um, the average person who's just a little bit overweight can do low carb, no problem and, and solve their life and like go forward. And you could do 125 mm -hmm. and be okay. Because if you just have a little bit of weight to lose and you don't have any diabetes or any kind of signs of, of heart issues or blood pressure issues or anything, then if you do low carb, you're taking so much out mm -hmm. that you're going to lose the weight and you're going to be fine. Right. But if you have significant weight to lose, if you have significant inflammation, if you are pre-diabetic or have like major insulin issues happening, taking it down to 20 might not be enough, mm. right? So I can only really tell if I'm measuring, mm. weighing my food, right? Then I'll be able to verify, okay, I'm at 20, I have yeah. to go a little lower, right? People will look at it and say, well, it's not working. It's not that it's not working. That's how much damage that yeah. we've done yeah. over 20, 30, Some, 40 years. Something is happening, basically. Like, it might not be it's a not weight fast. loss for, yeah. for now. Because I have I have a colleague at work that actually I even looked in her in her logging app and everything looked fine, but she wasn't moving. And I say, like, just keep keep pushing because, yeah. like, your body like it's might be doing something other else. Things. Like, yes. might, might be repairing, uh, like, something Internal else. Internal things. Of, yeah. See, this is the other so, thing. So that we have to persevere. This is the other thing that people don't know. I'm sorry, I was cutting off, but this is the other thing that people don't know. Like sometimes your body is working on cardiovascular repair or cell repair or tissue repair that we didn't feel the problem yet. But it's there. You know, um, I I went to a conference and I was talking to Dr. Sivas, Sivas, and um, one of the things he said to me in a conversation was. He said, people want to behave like if they can just eat sugar and then go for a run and the sugar is out of your system. He's like, no, you ate it. You ate it. It's affecting your cells, right? You can burn calories, but the sugar is still in there damaging things. So we have to be conscious of the fact that after 40 years, in my case, 40 years of eating rice almost every single day. Yeah, my body had a lot of repairing to, and it's still... That's the other thing I want to make sure people understand. Mm. My body is still, I'm a year and a half in and my body is still repairing, still rebuilding. It takes seven years to get a new body. I will not be comfortable with the idea that I have full flexibility back until I pass seven years because I'm being honest and realistic with myself. If there are any cancerous cells still floating around in there waiting to wreak some havoc and I stop being good at year three, I'm feeding those cancer cells some sugar to live them, mm. give them that possibility mm. of proliferating again. So I really want to help people. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just trying to be realistic. If it took 40 years for me to do all this damage, do I think I can reverse it in a year? Right? It's the same thing I tell clients to come to see me for psychological stuff. Mm. You're not going to change something that you've been doing for 40 years in three sessions. Mm-hmm. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes effort. And this is the same thing. I'm feeding my body and my body is not going to tear down the building. That would kill me. It's going to slowly, slowly do spot repairs until mm -hmm. it finally gets through the whole building. So keep that in mind, everybody. Yeah. You actually need to rebuild and it's rebuilding piece by piece. So if you're on a stall, mm -hmm. It could be that today your body decided to tackle this part of you and for the next week it's tackling this part of you because it's that important for it to fix this so you can move on. Yeah. So the only thing like we could say, because I was wondering, is there like some kind of a jump start or a, a little electroshock we can give to the body to try to... to um... To restart the process, M let's say you lost weight actually, you went into that like losing uh, weight losing phase and then you're stalled. But you still like everything is looks good. Like it's either you can be at your 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 goal or you what your body is like um, uh, comfortable with. But like, is there a way? What what would you recommend? Like just pu still pushing the low car, right? So it's, 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 okay. So if I understand you well, you're saying like, is there a way to jump start it so that you're back to losing weight? To yeah. Okay, and there is actually. Okay. So, because what you could do for my ten pounds that I. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you could do, um, there's a few different ways. Like I said, taking your grams of carbs just lower, just like dropping it. Lower, okay. Right? Um, but the other thing that you can do is allow yourself to fast. Oh, fast, yeah. Right? Because if you cool. fast 
Um, most people, if you do a fast, uh, especially if you do an extended fast, so again, every, you have to consider and look at your situation, look at your lifestyle. Um, a lot of people naturally fall into what they call time-restricted eating anyways, where you're eating two or one meal a day. So that's time-restricted eating. So what you could do is plan to have a day of no eating and then see how that affects you. So it could be that just doing one day of not eating allows your body to go in and start pulling the fat again. Yeah, and, storage. Right? So I honestly believe mm -hmm. that that could help you to just kind of kickstart being back in a losing phase. Mm -hmm. um, but if that doesn't solve it, uh, you can do a little bit of a longer fast. Instead of doing 24 hours, you can do 36. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just about pushing your body to the point where it starts to pull fat from storage again. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you are in the situation where maybe you're doing this lifestyle, but you're still doing three meals, rather than do a fast, I would really push you to consider doing two meals a day. Mm -hmm. And and when I say two meals a day, what I mean is in, instead of doing three meals, so breakfast, lunch, supper, that you either do breakfast, lunch, or lunch, or supper. Lunch, supper yeah. Please uh, don't do, window. don't do breakfast supper yeah. a lot of people become tempted to do breakfast supper but the problem with that is if i'm going to give my body the opportunity to have two meals a day i would also encourage you to give your body the opportunity to, to continue to do the cleanup that mm -hmm. is trying to do by doing lunch supper or breakfast lunch i give myself a good like 16 18 hours of not eating and that's like that sweet spot for autophagy and apoptosis to happen mm -hmm. to clean up cells and to really do, to make your, your internals be more healthy. Your body needs to not be processing food. Processing food is very energy intensive. Cleaning up cells is very energy intensive, hmm. right? Um, the one other thing that I'm going to say that could possibly cause a stall that I just thought about as I was saying that, you might totally be eating the right amount of carbs, 20 grams of carbs or less per day, but you might actually be eating too much fat. Hmm. Um, Sometimes when we're following what's being told to us on the internet, we believe yeah, that we should be everywhere. eating more fat than yeah. we actually need to be. Mm -hmm. And that's problematic. So the other thing that I would do is if you're adding, so if you're on a stall and you're adding fat to your coffee or eating fat bombs or adding, still, still adding fat to your meal. So like, let's say you're eating a steak, but you're still pouring fat on it or putting butter on it or, you know, mm -hmm. adding bacon to everything. I would just stop doing that. If you eat dietary fat, your body will not take it from you, mm -hmm. from your fat storage. So that would be the other big issue that I see because I do see on online, mm -hmm. uh, when people are talking about how to do a ketogenic lifestyle, they call it a high fat lifestyle. Mm. It is not a high fat lifestyle. It's a low carb, healthy fat lifestyle. It's a moderate mm. fat lifestyle. And I really, I don't know how people decide to start calling it a high fat lifestyle. It's healthy fat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but somehow, you know, this okay. terminology has come into place, mm. but you should be eating a moderate amount of fat um, with some of the fat coming from you. And I'll tell you right now, even when you get to maintenance, which is what I'm in, I'm still not eating high fat. Mm -hmm. I'm eating moderate fat, right? Like, so it, people are mistaken when they think this is a high fat. Am I eating more fat than low fat people are eating? So the, the, the standard American mm -hmm. diet, low fat people? Yes. If we compare that diet to what I eat, a thousand percent, I'm eating high fat, according to them. But it's not a high fat diet. Not, yeah. When you eat a, a, a steak or you eat a pork chop or you eat some chicken and you just allow yourself to eat the fat that was on that meal, that's not a high fat diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a couple of things to remember. Uh, if you stop tracking, get back on tracking. That's the most, I think, important thing to do. Just make sure that your your Track. serving size are still the right size for yeah. Weigh uh, your food. Weigh, weigh your, your food. food. It's not just tracking; so, it's weighing the food. Weigh those vegetables. Push back on lowering the carb. If, if you if, if you're doing stalling. it completely correctly and you you're still stalled, so if you weigh those foods and you're good, mm -hmm. maybe lower your carbs. Yeah. Uh, however, before you lower those carbs, you might want to double check your fat, as I just remembered. Mm -hmm. So ch I would check my fat first. Mm -hmm. Make sure yeah. I'm not overdoing the fat. Yeah, that was my next uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, but I would reverse it. I would double check mm -hmm. my fat first. 
and okay. then I would and then push if I okay. push yeah. my carbs because, because you might be lowering mm. your carbs for no reason, and really it's the dietary fat that you're eating that's keeping yeah, that's you at the, at the okay. same weight. That you're taking. Okay, okay, okay. And last, not lastly, because I think we should all do it like once in a while. But fasting is a good, uh, a good like uh, yeah, so little you, kick in the. Yeah, allowing yourself your to do some body. some time restricted eating, mm -hmm. I think, would be absolutely normal and and healthy at the stage where you're comfortable and able to get between meals. Like mm -hmm. double checking if you can actually, let's say, you wake up in the morning, just see when do I actually need that first meal. Some people are afraid of this because they work mm -hmm. and like they're not sure. Like if I miss if I miss breakfast, like I have to wait till lunch, and it might be a bit scary. But if you have the possibility of bringing some nuts with you or even a hard boiled, like two hard boiled eggs that if you do get hungry, you could eat those eggs. It doesn't take long to eat a hard boiled egg. Piece of cheese too. But what I'm saying is that I actually think a lot of people would make it if they tried, but they're so scared to try. So if you bring yourself a nice, like two hard boiled eggs, that's probably what you would have for breakfast anyway. And just bring them with you. And if you see it, you see. If you make it all the way to lunch, then you know, guess what? I can make it to lunch. And you, that fear can go away. If you need to eat the eggs, at least you didn't eat them first thing in the morning. Hmm. Right? So you still gave yourself a bit more time of, um, of autophagy and apoptosis happening. So that would be the other piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, so obviously there are things you can do to get through a stall. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to help yourself to get to that healthy weight that you're trying to get to. If you have any other idea, let us know in the comments. If we didn't name something that you actually do, please put it in the comments because the more we share information and help each other, the better we're all going to be. You know, we can actually learn from each other. I'm really happy with this video. I, I mm -hmm. thought it went really good. I appreciate that you guys made it to the end of the video. All my wellness warriors, I love having you guys here. For those of you who are not yet wellness warriors, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things, because we make videos every mm -hmm. week. And if you actually enjoyed this content and felt that we taught you something, maybe helped you to get over a stall or will be in the process of helping you get over a stall, consider, I have a Patreon account. You can go there if you want to help contribute to the production of some of these videos. Patreon slash Violet Rivera. There's some perks there. You can go check it out. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness of Violet, Pat Chat Edition. We love talking to you guys. I can't wait to talk to you next week. See you next week.